good morning and welcome back again so now we can move on to our second family of the order thyrodospermales that is medullosaceae so remember the family name medullosaceae this medullosaceae existed in the upper mississippian and uh, that extended to the permian period so all of them flourished well in the carboniferous period and uh, the main uh, fossilized forms are the stem their fronds that is their leaves and roots and the reproductive organs both male and female reproductive organs you can observe and most of the fossil forms are compressed or uh, the impression forms okay and the two famous paleontologists namely stewart and delivorais reconstruct the medullosaceous members so uh, like other uh, fossil groups this also fossilized by stem leaf Uh, reproductive parts etc separately and later uh, the paleo botanist they reconstructed and uh, made them into one plant okay so medullosaceae include several uh, genera or several forms but for you uh, have to study only one member that is medullosa okay and the complete medullosa is reconstructed by stewart what are the important points so medullosaceae having polystelic condition so just compare what we studied in the last class that is the legionotheridaceae they have monostelic condition a single steel but while coming to the medullosaceae you can see here polystelic condition what is polystelic many small steels each steel having xylem and phloem so this is a character that is uh, transferred from the ferns or the last filicales group so polystelic condition observed in medullosa and a new report uh, of one member that saying that they have monostelic condition that is interconnected bundles so actually why it happens is because of the uh, steel splits into many groups that is polystelic condition so i will draw you the diagram you can see how this happen uh, see uh, this is the condition of a circle a ring Uh, with the, the strips of xylem and phloem so here you can see the strips of xylem and phloem and uh, uh, this is one group uh, this is one this is one steel this is one steel this is one steel this is one steel. like this okay but what happens is in the case of this is monostelic condition what happens in the case of polystelic condition is this splits up and splits up and it like form like this see one group another group another group another group hmm? likewise splits up one form here it is the xylem at the center surrounded by phloem so each this become one group this become another group so a break occurs a break occurs so this monostelic that become polystelic but these observations are on different times so we cannot say which one is the first one polystelic or monostelic condition may be like this okay then fronds are large large leaves and rachis are bifurcated okay branched uh, dichotomously branched rachis that same thing you studied in your legino teridaceae also okay then seeds are very large and non cupulate cupules or the basal sheath is absent okay and nucellus is free from the integument that's important point then pollen organs are arranged in synanchia you know what is synanchia they are the group of sporangia okay that we discussed a typical feature in the teledospermales so that is also present here pollen organ in synanchia okay then seeds are large non cupulate nucellus free from integument now what next point is uh, the genera form genera observed is stem you can call it as medullosa and colposylon two are the medullosa and the colposylon for you have to study only medullosa in your practical syllabus and petiole is mylocylon petiole is known as mylocylon fronds or the leaf is known as neuroteris this i already told in the last class the teris is the common term applied for fossil leaves okay so fronds are neuroteris then seeds are pachytesta or trigonocarpus they are the synonyms both are same but known by different names this also there in your syllabus for practical so stem genera medullosa is there and seed genera pachytesta or trigonocarpus is there in your syllabus others are not there okay then pollen bearing organ is codonotheca 
so these are the terms given for different parts so uh, stewart and devrai uh, reconstructed all this and made into a single plant that is also known as medullosa so don't confuse with these names each part is known by different uh, names in different time period clear then later they are all reconstructed because they are all fossils you know the difficulty in studying the fossils okay so today you got a fossil by digging then after uh, many uh, months or many years later you will get one another hmm? so all together keeping and you will compare and you will find out some similarities then you reconstruct it and you made it to one form this is happening clear so seeds packet test out trigonocarpus stem is medullosa okay so now we are moving on to medullosa medullosa about 40 species are there they observed in the upper carboniferous period to permian period and lower portion of the stem in medullosa are covered by periderm and adventitious root so periderm is a covering external covering and adventitious roots arises from this stem this is important point and there are leaf scars on the surface what is leaf scar when a leaf fall a marking arises on this stem so leaf scar is present adventitious roots present and periderm is present a very important point and also at the apex of the stem is bifurcated like our coconut palm hmm? and forming pinnately compound or bipartite fronds or leaves now we are moving on to the a well known reconstructed plant that is medullosa noi in medullosa noi a species that appear like a tree fern appear like a tree fern of about 4.5 meter in height and crown of leaves okay so lower portion of the stem is covered by periderm and adventitious root that we already discussed and the leaves having large pinnately compound medullose and frond very large one dichotomously branched one and uh, the example is neuroteris and allotteris so teris is a tail okay the pinna are attached to the medullose and noe stem so this is the appearance you can see all the features that i told you here so this is the stem see i will draw once more because that's not clear so this is a stem part and see what is happening here this is the leaf scars see these are the leaf scars appear on the stem surface fallen leaves and this is the apex and apex is having uh, bifurcated uh, this is a branched bifurcations you can see bifurcations where it ends bifurcation ends in the uh, pinnately compound leaves so here is the pinnately compound leaves clear so this is the condition clear so a trunk a structure a tree fern with bifurcated branches at the apex ending large number of by compound leaves or fronds and stem is having leaf scars clear now about the anatomy of medullosa stem medullosa stem is polystelic clear medullosa members are polystelic that we already discussed how polystelic arise also you know now okay then species are distinguished by number of stems so there are new number of medullosa many species are there we are discussing medullosa noi so each species you can uh, identify by looking into the number of stems clear so each stem is endocentric what do you mean by endocentric see the point endocentric means a central there is a uh, secondary wood secondary tissue that is xylem that is xylem piece like this then uh, surrounded by another tissue that is uh, endocentric condition and med well, differences medullosa anglica is another species having three steels clear medullosa anglica having three steels so polystelic means more than one steel maybe two to uh, many but in medullosa anglica three steels in medullosa primeva that's another species you can observe 20 steels in medullosa primeva 20 steels are there in medullosa leucarti another member outer steel is very large expanded and fused with inner steel so the polystelic condition vary from two to many in one example is 20 in the case of primeva and three in the case of anglica and two with the outer expanded and then in fused with inner in the case of leucarti clear see this is a condition this is a endocentric structure this is a xylem strand at the center these are the parenchymatous tissue surrounding these are the number of steels this is a one steel this is a steel uh, this is another steel clear 
this is another steel so polystyric many steels are arranged like this so by looking into the picture you can say that this is the one belongs to medullosa clear so medullosa can be easily identified looking into the number of steels understood okay now medullosa anglica i already told you three steels because this is there in uh, in our set of fossil slides in our core campus so while examination you have to uh, this slide will be there for exam you have to write uh, about medullosa anglica three steel is there a more advanced species each steel having a primary protoxylum clear primary protoxylum and parenchyma mixed with tracheids and metacelum each steel has a primary protoxylum and parenchyma mixed with tracheids of metacelum okay so medullosa anglica primary xylem is completely covered by uh, manosilic secondary wood so primary xylem i already told you that is come protoxylum and metacelum completely covered by secondary wood is there then that wood is multi seriate with bordered pits wood means what xylem secondary xylem okay and medullary rays are multi seriate what is medullary rays that occur in between the xylem groups then what about ground tissue ground tissue differentiated in almost all pteridospermal cities like this inner cortex and outer cortex so inner cortex is parenchymatous with a sclerotic nest same point you studied in the lesionotridaceae so outer cortex and inner cortex inner cortex with the sclerotic nest and outer cortex is with the fiber and parenchyma don't confuse compare the structure inner with the, uh, the parenchyma sclerotic nest outer with the fiber and parenchyma okay then a thick walled phalloderm outer covering is also present numerous secretory canals are also present clear that's also present so this is the polystylic condition these are the outer cortical region outer cortical region having inner cortex and outer cortex this is a inner cortex this region is the inner cortex and this is the outer cortex clear so differentiate both and this is the xylem these are this lined structure is a secondary xylem and center one is the primary xylem okay having protoxylem and metacelum group very very important the stellar organization and now so we discussed the medullosa stem clear stem is known as medullosa structure is very important you can differentiate by steel clear now we are moving on to the seed that is pachytesta or trigonocarpus they are preserved as compression in associated with the leaves common seeds are pachytesta codonospermum and tichotesta but you have to study only pachytesta so trigonocarpus or pachytesta are synonyms i already told you known by different names only nothing but the confusion is that trigonocarpus is a cast cast is a mode of fossilization that mold like a box like structure trigonocarpus is a cast or impression but pachytesta is a petrified form that is the difference trigonocarpus is a cast or impression but pachytesta is a petrified form that is the difference so we are now moving on to discuss pachytesta or trigonocarpus so that is a seed already told you so it occur in the throughout in the upper carboniferous period so brogniart first described the cast and impression and made them into a group trigonocarpus okay and later it is renamed as pachytesta oliviformis this p is pachytesta oliviformis first it is known as trigonocarpus later renamed as pachytest now the seeds having some peculiar features they show ridges at a distal end and integuments are present integuments are free from nucellus the integuments having fleshy layer and stony layer fleshy layer outer and inner stony layer it is also known as sclerotesta so this is the diagram of the pachy uh, the trigonocarpus see Uh, having the structures like outer uh, integuments integuments are two layer what are they that uh, fleshy layer and stony layer the nucellus region and one pollen chamber is there and that see outer integument extends in inner part inner integument extends out and for micro pile region this is a micro pilar region through which pollen grain enter and pollen grains deposit here that is pollen chamber and this is the structure of the pachy testa and this is the pachytesta see where it is formed where it is formed in the neuroteris what is neuroteris that is a front or leaves so apex of the leaves uh, the pachytesta is formed so this is a uh, section of the seed 
having three layers inner uh, sarcotesta middle sclerotesta and endotesta so endotesta and sarcotesta are fleshy sclerotesta is the stony layer clear this diagram you have to draw and study this is another picture of the same thing this is the micropylar region these are the uh, outer coverings and this is the this center portion is the nucellus clear so that's all for trigonocarpus and one more point uh, once more uh, about the micropylar the apical region then two flattened wings that is fleshy layer outer fleshy layer expanded and form flattened wings then there is a pollen chamber in the nucellar region also so this is very important uh, you have to study uh, describe the structure of middlelosa stem they are very important because of the presence of uh, steels different polystelic condition and also you have to explain the seed pachytesta or trigonocarpus both are same so draw diagrams and explain so uh, that's all about the middlelosa sca character of middlelosa sca based on the steel or organization and middlelosa sca members mainly middlelosa and uh, pachytesta or trigonocarpus seeds both are same so study well uh, this may be asking for both the theory as well as for the practical examination so that's all for today have a nice day thank you